Good evening, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and welcome to the latest in our series of Facebook Town Hall Meetings. Tonight, we're going to be talking with a group of young people from across Westchester County, uh, one of our uh, medical professionals who's been involved in the COVID outbreak, and also the head of our youth board for Westchester County, Dr. Damia Harris-Madden. Uh, I'm here to welcome you to this event, but we think that uh, the best dialogue is going to happen uh, among young people and with people a bit younger, so I've asked our Director of Communications, Catherine Chaffee, to serve as the uh, MC role, and she will be replacing me here to sort of steer the dialogue. As we're dealing with the COVID-19 outbreak over the last few months, we've seen the rise of vaccinations and the diminution in the amount of infection, but we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, but doors have opened more recently that involve uh, young people receiving vaccinations, being eligible to receive vaccinations, and uh, also questions that relate to uh, the disease itself and how they affect young people as opposed to how they affect those who are older. When the uh, virus first uh, came out, pretty clearly those who are age 60 and over felt very vulnerable and uh, the attention was on that cohort. But now it's a much broader set of circumstances and how we handle uh, being in school, education, how we handle higher education, those who are going to colleges and universities, and the kind of questions that uh, come out of the experience of people who are a lot younger uh, really will be addressed in tonight's forum. Uh, we welcome you to comment uh, directly or on Facebook, and of course, uh, Catherine uh, Chaffee, who again will be serving in this MC role, uh, will be able to steer the dialogue through the different points. I want to highlight that uh, I'm very happy to have Dr. Damia Harris Madden uh, not only as our uh, head of the, the Youth Bureau here in Westchester County, she's very experienced in this area. She has a great sensitivity for the issues that are facing young people of all sorts, um, you know, young uh, boys, young women. Uh, those who are uh, of various uh, situations and demographics. And it's very important for us to try to figure how do we shape policy to address the needs of young people as well as those who are older and those who own property. So uh, with no further uh, uh, explanations, we thank you for tuning in. And I want to turn it over first to Dr. Damia Dr. Damia Harris Madden. Very, very happy that you're with us, Damia. Thank you for your professional help and work. Thank you so much, George. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time and providing us with this platform. I have to say that this conversation uh, was a result of the work of uh, Jack Kelly, who is our probably our youngest member of the Westchester County Youth Board. Um, he is very passionate about equity and ensuring that our young people have uh, targeted are a part of a targeted approach, um, particularly given the social health determinants that uh, plague many communities. And COVID is no exception. So I want I don't want to take all of the credit for Jack's um, you know thinking, and he really is the impetus to this. Um, and I'd also like to thank Dr. Etienne, who um, has welcomed me on to the uh, local Westchester County Equity Task Force, which really serves to address those gaps that we are seeking to fill so that more people are involved, more people are educated, and obviously we can try to stem as best as we can. And Westchester is doing an amazing job in, in, in cur curtailing, I would say, and significantly reducing the amount of infections with COVID-19. And um, the other young women who we will introduce at some point came to us because they too are passionate. One, Michelle is a student at UPenn and um, Kelly is from the city of New Rochelle Youth Board. And so we all tonight have so much to contribute to this conversation. And although it's limited time, we do think that we can have a productive session just to kind of vet some questions that may come from our young people and also to give um, medical advice from Dr. Etienne for, for those who may have hesitance and to address the declination that we're also seeing across the county um, so that more people are better equipped to make decisions regarding their health concerning COVID-19. So thank you for allowing me to be a part of this platform. And at this time, I, I guess I would just like to um, popcorn style, as the young people say, uh, shoot this over to Jack to introduce himself. And then, oh. Jack, you can pass it over. Well, you know what, Dr. Dr. Uh, Damien harris Brown, I'm going to jump in real quick right here. So, okay. so I'm taking it. It's OK. 
It's all right. I'm I'm, I didn't see you there. I'm that's sorry. It's all right. I've just, George, I've more, George morphed into me. Here I am. It's great to be with you all tonight. And we're, I'm really excited to have this conversation with all of you. Um, as the county executive has mentioned, you know, we here in the communications department have been working really hard to, uh, to reach young people and to talk about the vaccine. So this is just a culmination of all of, all of those efforts tonight. So I do want to turn this over to Dr. Uh, ATN uh, from Westchester medical center oh he's got a little visitor this is the the perfect uh z moment right here right now um where we love a little visitor here but if you could uh introduce yourself uh, let everyone know your experience and uh and and i love your little visitor okay i'm going to shoot it right over to you dr atm hello everyone you guys got to meet my daughter um she's not quite of the age that can get the vaccine at this point but um so I'm Dr. Millie Tien. I'm a neurologist uh, in the community, um, and I'm also serving as the uh, direct, the head of the Health Equity Task Force for the Hudson Valley. Um, and really, the the and then my other role um, is um, at the medical school here, New York Medical College in, in Westchester, as the vice chancellor for diversity and inclusion. Well, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We, we really appreciate you being with us. Next, let's go to Michelle, who is a, who's a Westchester native, one of our young people here in the county. Michelle, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Madge Perez. I'm born and raised in White Plains, New York. I graduated from White Plains High School in 2019. Um, now I finished my sophomore year about two days ago at the University of Pennsylvania, where I'm double majoring in psychology and Hispanic studies. Um, and I really just want to thank Mr. Lattimore and the Westchester County Office for helping facilitating, uh, facilitate this really important dialogue that we're having tonight. Thank you. And thank you so much for being with us. And congratulations on finishing the school year. That's wonderful news. Next, let's go to Jack. Jack, can you introduce yourself to us? Jack, are you having, I think Jack's having some technical difficulties, so we're, we'll go to ha ha Hallie. Um, Hallie, can you introduce yourself to us? Sure. Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Hallie Bonner, and I'm representing New Rochelle. I'm the president of New Rochelle Youth Council. I am a senior at the Monfort Academy, and I will be attending Quinnipiac University as a nursing major in the fall. I want to extend a very special thank you to the Westchester County Executive, George Latimer, and all participants for hosting a panel that allows students to have an open discussion and bring awareness to an important issue. Thank you, Hallie. So Hallie, we'll, we'll start with you real quick. Uh, are, you, are you vaccinated? Tell me, where are you in the process? So at first, honestly, I was skeptical, um, but then I let that, I wasn't, I was not gonna allow myself to be hesitant anymore. Um, I got vac vaccinated on my first dose was April 14th. And then my second dose was um, May 5th. Um, some symptoms that I experienced was tiredness and I had soreness in my, in my arm. But other than that, I was perfectly fine. And so I know you said you were a little bit tired. How long did the symptoms last after you got your second shot? So my, my appointment was around 4 p.m. Um, after my appointment, I, I got home, I ate dinner, and I went to sleep right after. And then when I woke up the next morning, I wasn't tired anymore. Um, I had a full night um, rest, and then I just had soreness in my, my arm the next day. And was that soreness, you know, for you, having the soreness, was it all worth it? Because now here you are fully vaccinated. Yes, it was definitely worth it. Um, like I said before, I was skeptical at first. But then I weighed my options and I saw and I saw that the good outweighed the bad, meaning that the symptoms that you deal with with the vaccination is on the good side compared to um, the, the severity of issues that you would deal with if you received COVID-19. So I just wanted to take the vaccine for myself. I knew that it was going to put me at a lower risk of um, getting COVID-19 and just protect myself, older um, relatives, friends and family members. Dr. Etienne, we hear um, from a lot of people of all different ages concerned about getting the vaccine. That, that's certainly nothing new that's been occurring. Probably the biggest question that we get asked is, can the vaccine give me COVID-19? Can you explain to people how the vaccine works and, and if it can in fact give you COVID-19? 
Yeah, so the, the way this vaccine is designed, you do not actually get the COVID-19 infection. Um, so the two, you know, as, as you know, we have three vaccines that currently have the emergency use authorization here in the United States. Um, the two that first got the, appro uh, the authorization were the Moderna and the Pfizer. And um, those vaccines, the way they work, um, they're called mRNA vaccines. And after they're injected into your body, uh, they get your, uh, they help to create this protein, which, you know, when, when you look at the, I'm sure you've all seen the picture of COVID uh, at this point, and you see it's got some spikes that are kind of pointing out of it. Um, so what you're basically doing is creating that spike protein in your body, and then your body sees that as something foreign and, and then learns to attack it. Uh, your body creates what are called antibodies, which is your body's kind of uh, immune system or your kind of your defense against infection. And so it learns to attack that spike protein. So it's not actually creating a COVID inside your body. It's a spike protein. Um, so now because of the fact that COVID has the spike protein, if you ever got an infection, you'd be ready to fight off the COVID. So you're not actually being injected with the COVID virus um, with, those, with those vaccines, uh, the Moderna and the Pfizer. So, so Michelle, let me ask you, when you heard that they lowered the age of those who could get the vaccine and you became eligible, what was going through your head? I've been waiting for the COVID-19 vaccine since March of 2020. Um, I actually received my second dose yesterday. I received the Pfizer, which was really exciting. Um, it was, you know, I, I didn't hesitate to get the vaccine simply because um, I the year 2020 was very difficult for many, many reasons. I think COVID-19 is a very nuanced and complex situation in regards to not only the mortality rates, but also unemployment. And um, just seeing people really struggle was really difficult. And so, um, for instance, my parents work in healthcare and um, they're obviously, you know, in their 50s. And it was always this fear of mine of, you know, what were to happen if, if they were to acquire COVID. But it's not like they could stop going to work. You know, you still need food on the table and a roof over your head. So um, they were really fortunate to receive it because of the age um, limitations earlier than I was. And um, they had been exposed to COVID and they didn't get it. And so it goes to show that the vaccine does work. Um, and then once my university started offering the vaccine, it was just everybody was ready to, to go. And it was a really simple process. I got my vaccine. I went bowling right after. I woke up this morning. I feel fantastic. Um, and I'm just really happy that I can help um, this, the fight, you know, against COVID. You know, that that was actually going to be my next question is how are you feeling? Because you just got the vaccine. So can you can you walk me through that a little bit? So you went to get the vaccine yesterday. What happened? What did you feel? Sure. Um, so I walked to my school's gymnasium and I waited. I was there for approximately 30 minutes. Um, they injected me with the Pfizer. I didn't feel anything, and I'm not too fond of needles, but it wasn't painful. Um, they held me in a 15-minute observatory where I felt fantastic. I walked home, um, and then uh, I was I took I got it in Philadelphia, so I just got to New York a couple hours later, um, and then that was pretty much it. I did the the TikTok windmill thing with your arm to try and prevent the soreness. Mm -hmm. uh, my arm feels fine. And then, like I said, I went bowling, I, I went to bed, and I woke up this morning with honestly no side effects. Um, I suffer from allergies, and I think that just being back with this New York pollen is what's making me a little sniffly. But um, no, I'm on it. I feel great. I feel much better than I was expecting to. So that's great news. But yeah. that's wonderful. That's so good to hear. Um, Dr. Harris Madden. Um, you were vaccinated recently as well, um, which is, we're, we're all so excited to be vaccinated. I feel like it's just coming out of our skin, how excited we all are to, uh, to have the vaccine. But uh, Dr. harris Madden, can you tell us a little bit about what the Youth Bureau has been doing here in the county to, to motivate young people to, to go and get vaccinated? Sure. So as I mentioned before, young people such as Jack have actually reached out 
um, and offer to lend support in many different ways. Um, first, let me acknowledge the Department of Health and your department, Catherine, for the NICS initiative because we were able to disseminate the, you know, kick COVID campaign. And so, you know, just by using our social media platform and our influencers like those that are here today, we're able to really talk about, you know, um, dispel some of the myths and debunk those things. I am a mother of three. Um, I am very candid about the tremendous losses I have had with, you know, my immediate family members, including my dad and my brother, which, you know, breaks my heart. But um, what gives me hope, and I think what gives so many young people hope, is that there's opportunity now to kind of resume yes. normal activities. And we have, you know, young people who are we're waiting in the wings that are on our various councils saying they couldn't wait to get vaccinated. And now that there's authorization for 12 year old and up, um, we expect to have more young people raise their hand, even for tonight's forum. Uh, at, at least 10 young people wanted to be a part of this. So what we've done is, um, you know, scheduled another um, WebEx, if you will, or, or discussion where we will have more young people to join medical experts and have open dialogue and conversation on June 3rd. So, you know, some of the things that we are hoping to do is to work with your department and perhaps, you know, come up with some campaigns like New York City has developed, um, maybe some incentives um, to, to kind of encourage young people to come out, but also just, um, you know, allow for young people to ask the questions because the state has a number of uh, resources, picturesque, um, as well as the county that we can continue to disseminate. Additionally, our young people, you know, are our influencers and taking this information to their peers and their peers' peers. So it's really based on word of mouth. It's similar to the mask. We saw a hesitancy in wearing masks for a long time. And I believe that the more information that's out there and the more we can assure young people that this vaccine is safe, that more young people will, you know, make the decision and their parents, of course, because there's parental consent that's necessary, will follow suit and allow their young people. Because many of our young people, Catherine, as you know, are still home learning remotely. They are craving to get back into school. They feel socially yes. isolated, yet they are afraid that they cannot, you know, that they will contract COVID. And so now there's opportunity, particularly for those that are in middle and high school, to have a vaccination and feel a little more comfortable when they return to school in the fall. Um, Dr. harris Madden, you touched on, on a few things there that I think it's really important that we address. That being the tremendous loss that people have suffered during, during the past year and, and few months. Um, whether it be loss of a loved one, loss of income, loss of um, the, the ability to go out and see your friends. Um, what is your message to young people who, who've been through a lot, who've been through a lot this past year? My message is you are so resilient, more resilient and strong than you think you are. Um, again, speaking from just a personal perspective, uh, we are going to be left with generations of young people who are bereft parents, grandparents. Um, they have lost friendships because when you're really young, sometimes friendships come and go. We learn as we get older, it's, it's kind of for the best, but that's hard to explain to someone who's, you know, in elementary school mm -hmm. or middle school and they no longer can hang out. And so they kind of become in the back rear mirror, rear view of mirror, excuse me. Um, so, you know, the message is really that there are lots of opportunities um, and particularly with this vaccine, more young people will feel comfortable. We have opportunities for young people to work um, through the county and our parks, at Playland, at our pools. Um, and so to feel safe, we want you to consider taking the vaccine um, and wearing your mask. You know, uh, there are CDC guidelines that continue to change, but to remain hopeful because we are still starting to resume life. We are starting to see movie theaters open up and young people being able to engage more. Um, this summer, we are, you know, we're going to host that preparing for summer so that parents feel at ease when they drop their children off to summer camp and, and maybe 
you know, young people will have badges or something that says I've been vaccinated, like the stickers your department created. Um, so that young people can feel safe if they want to work. Because I think it was Hallie that mentioned the loss of income is significant. Young people, particularly teenagers who rely on income every summer, have been, you know, at a deficit at this point. And then what has exasperated the issue is when their parents may have lost employment or have been you know, furloughed for a period of time. So the economics in the households have changed. And I often say those who have been impoverished have been kind of like on the brink are now pushed onto the pavement. But the good news is that jobs are coming back. Opportunities are coming back. So let's be as safe as possible so that we can enjoy those opportunities. Absolutely. Very well said. Um, I want to remind everyone that if you have questions for mm -hmm. any of the students, for Dr. Mm -hmm. Atian, for Dr. Harris Madden, please put them in the mm -hmm. chat on Facebook. Um, we are monitoring the chat. Any questions mm -hmm. you put there, we're happy to ask. We do have a lot of questions that were sent in beforehand, so we're going to go mm -hmm. through some of them. Um, the next question uh, for Dr. Atian is mm -hmm. about the vaccine. Again, um, we have uh, someone who wrote in and wants to know why the age keeps getting lowered for who's able to get the vaccine. Can you explain how this works? Right. So when the when the vaccine first got uh, the FDA approval, the testing had been done uh, primarily on adults, um, right? So the Moderna had been done on people 18 and over. The Pfizer had been done on people 16 and over. Uh, the Johnson & Johnson uh, was uh, also 18 and over. Um, once it got approved, we said, you know, people could start getting it. But one of the one of the assessments that the government made was who is at most risk. Let's let's start giving the vaccine to the people at highest risk. That's why you saw in many states you wanted the you know the frontline workers and they also wanted the elderly uh, community, people in their 70s, then then dropped it to the people in their 60s, people who we see who have been getting very sick and also dying from COVID. Those are the people we wanted to prioritize um, in terms of uh, getting the vaccine. Um, now, what they've been doing is because we know we want to get as many people vaccinated as possible, they've been doing testing on the vaccine in younger people. Um, so that's why now we see that they've done enough, enough testing and gotten enough data for people who are at the age, you know, at the 12. So that's why now we've, the, the, the age has been dropped. Uh, the age will not be dropped. Really frozen. Into... Oh, I'm frozen. Oh, no, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, the, you were not yeah, the frozen. Keep going. Not... Yeah, I'm sorry. The age will not be dropped to include anybody younger until there is enough data about those particular uh, uh, that particular population. So that's why you see the age. Uh, you know, each time is getting lowered. It's really based on the data that we have available. Uh, about who can actually safely get vaccinated. For, thank you for explaining that. I hear we have Jack back. He's back from being frozen. Dr. Etienne, you were not frozen. I apologize that you heard me say that. Um, <laughs> Jack, can you uh, introduce yourself to us? I know we had some technical difficulties before, but you're back. We're excited to have you. T tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, totally. Um, well, good to be back. Um, I'm <laughs> Jack Kelly. I'm a junior at Harrison High School. Um, I'm one of the Westchester Youth Board members, as well as the co-president of the Westchester Youth Empowerment Council for Change. I am particularly excited about this event because I think that it is super important that young people are able to get vaccinated. Obviously, the, the digital conditions of everything are suboptimal, as we can see from the technical difficulties I just had to endure. So I'm really enthused about getting young people vaccinated and hoping to crush this pandemic so that we can um, enter a world where we don't have to deal with many of the problems and adversities that this pandemic has brought upon us. Oh my gosh, we, we all agree with you 100% there. Jack, um, have you been vaccinated? I have. Fortunately, Wednesday was the post two week mark. So in early April, I got my first shot, second shot on April 28th. And now it's been two weeks after that. So as of yesterday, I am officially fully vaccinated, which is just such a great feeling. 
That's wonderful. Congratulations. That's, and I remember when I hit my two-week mark after my second vaccine, it was a, it was a very freeing feeling. It just felt, I felt a little bit more confident walking down the street. It's, it's a good feeling. So congratulations. Can you tell us what was that vaccine process like? How'd you feel after the second shot? How long did whatever you feel last? Yeah, totally. Um, it, I got it vaccinated at the CVS in Mamaroneck, which was quite a painless process. It was really easy in and out. The people that were working there really knew what they were doing. Um, unfortunately, I, I will be fully frank, it was not the greatest feeling second shot. I was definitely very tired, felt like I got hit by a truck, but it I, I, at the same time, like there was this like immense feeling of excitement that kind of like surpassed all of these feelings of just tired grogginess. Um, so it, it was a, a whole juncture of feelings, but overall really positive and and really um, optimistic about what being vaccinated meant for the future. That's great. I think it's important to note, I mean, while you don't feel great or some people don't feel great after the second shot, you know, the way I interpreted not feeling great was it was ex an excuse for me to just relax and catch up on some television that I normally wouldn't have the opportunity to watch. So mm -hmm. I watched, uh, full disclosure, I watched The Real Housewives of New Jersey. And by the end of the uh, season, I felt I felt great. And, and we went on with my uh, went on with my life. So I, uh, I think it's important to note that it, it doesn't last whatever you feel does not last very long yeah. so um, sure. I want to go back to Haley Haley um, Haley I'm so sorry um, tell me a little bit about what people are saying you know, in the hallways of school what are your friends saying about about getting vaccinated are they excited are they nervous what, what's the word on the street there so at first I noticed a large array of adolescents leading uneducated remarks about serious matters such as the COVID vaccine for example, it can alter children's DNA, it could cause fertility issues, um, or it is not necessary for our age group, which is why I was willing to be a part of the forum to educate and change the youth perspective on the serious matter. Um, I feel like many teenagers or young adults listen to ignorant remarks and false information on the vac vaccination, and they follow others instead of formulating their own opinion. Um, but now that, that has kind of taken a positive shift and people are more willing. It's a 50-50. Some people are still um, stating ignorant remarks and they're not as well educated on the vaccination or they are excited to do um, to take the vaccination um, because they see that it, is, it would um, turn into a positive shift. You know, it's, it's important to note that um, we did a PSA with the New York Knicks. Uh, we had Obi Toppin on the uh, PSA getting his vaccine, talking about getting his vaccine. And we did that because he's somebody that we all know. He's somebody from Westchester County. He, he's from Austin. He's one of us. And he was excited to get the vaccine. And, and he wanted to share that with other young people in the county. So I know there is a lot of misinformation out there. I know there is a lot of concern. But um, we are really working hard to get the word out about all the people who are spreading a positive message about the vaccine or having a positive experience about it. So we will post the link to the PSA uh, in the chat so everyone can see it. Um, but Dr. Etienne, I'd love for you to address this, this um, topic that Hallie just brought up about fertility, because we do hear that. I know I've heard that um, from people of all different ages. Will the, the COVID vaccine, will it affect my fertility? Will it, will it make me infertile? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, to this point, there is no evidence at all uh, that this vac any of the vaccines uh, impact fertility. Um, in fact, um, you know, even patients who have been pregnant uh, through consultation with their physicians, uh, many of them have gotten the vaccine. It's, you know, typically based on a, on a cost benefit analysis. Um, you know, you, you balance out the risk of exposure to COVID versus the benefit of the vaccine. So a lot of uh, pregnant patients are getting it. Uh, there has been no report of uh, any problems with fertility to this uh, at this point. So that is not something that we're uh, really uh, warning about because it doesn't seem to exist at this point. Okay, Michelle, you're at the college level, so the conversation is going to be a bit different. Maybe it's going to be a bit different. I shouldn't really assume. But what do you tell your friends who have questions about the vaccine, who are nervous about the vaccine? You just had a very positive experience. What do you tell them? Um, I think that 
especially at a, as a college student, you know, um, these are four years that you're never really going to get back. The college is such a unique experience and it's such an important time to connect with students from all over the world, all over the country, um, really learn and engage, build your network and honestly have hands on experience that you can take to your career and professional level. So um, I think that everybody is kind of just like aching for this feeling of normalcy to enjoy being a student and and really taking advantage of all the resources that these universities have to offer um i think that you know going back to Hallie's point like it is really easy especially for young people to just kind of believe whatever they see on the internet believe whatever they see on social media and that's why it's really important to also share resources on there and you know use your instagram stories and your twitter to really raise awareness and that's the platform that's gonna reach um, young kids as well as this Facebook Live, you know? So um, I think people are excited to take advantage of the opportunities that they've wanted for so long. Um, and fortunately, I think that there is, uh, there's been a transition to wanting to um, get the vaccine. So I'm hoping that that will kind of keep happening. And also I, I'm really fortunate to go to a school where people understand that this isn't, just because you're young that, and maybe, you know, there's this myth that goes around like, just because you're young, COVID's not gonna kill you. You're really gonna be fine if you get COVID. But it's important to recognize that social distancing is a privilege. Not going to work is a privilege. If you can stay in your home and not really have the same concern as people who you know, are at a higher risk of, of potentially dying from this virus, then it's, it's important to recognize your privilege in the matter and understand that there's science that backs this um, and hopefully help contribute in helping those who maybe aren't in the same position as you. Absolutely. Dr. Aitin, we have a question for you from Maria. She wants to know, if you take any medications, should you discuss possible interactions with certain vaccines with your doctor? Yeah, so um there there aren't really we haven't really been seeing any big issue with the with various medications uh definitely if you know we don't encourage people taking anti-inflammatory medications right before the vaccine uh but if you're you know you, you should continue taking your regular maintenance medications if you've got any kind of serious medical condition uh where you think there may be a concern the best thing is really to speak to your your personal doctor uh to make sure that there is no contraindication but really uh, you know, there's really rare instances where we would actually say to somebody to not get the vaccine because even people with serious illnesses, oftentimes they're the ones who are most at risk for getting a bad uh, COVID infection. Um, and so that's why we're trying to get, you know, these patients typically vaccinated to avoid any bad outcomes. We have another question for you, Dr. Adrian from Regina. Is there any other way to get the vaccine if I don't want to get a shot? Uh, well, uh, the way the vaccines work right now, they're all uh, you know, the three vaccines that have emergency use authorization are all done as shots. So there's really not another way to, to do that at this time. OK. All right. Let's go uh, back to Dr. Harris Madden. Dr. Harris Madden, talk to me a little bit about how your life has changed since you got the vaccine. You know, I'm still rather conservative. I, I do feel a little bit more relieved because I do have a elderly mother who is thankfully, you know, help, very helpful with me and my children who are learning remotely. Uh, in fact, one of my children are not even able to attend school at this time um, just due to her age. So, you know, it's really, it was necessary for me to protect myself, my family, uh, my children also, um, just I, I feel a sigh of relief I, I can't tell you how you know it is a little more liberating because for so long again very conservative in my movement coming to work going home not even entering a grocery store I love to shop and now I feel okay to go into a store and and pick up some clothing if I want to or you know something and that may sound very superficial but it's those small things that we've taken for granted that um you know really were not not feasible for me you know some people had a you know had had less uh challenges maybe did not have as many personal 
um, hurdles to climb as I did. And so they felt comfortable going out immediately. It took me a little time. Now I'm venturing out slowly, but surely I am grateful for that because my children are just really happy to have their mother back, being able to go out. And even if it's something as simple as taking a trip to hike somewhere or a ride mm -hmm. and, and get out of the car, you know, they're very happy. And so their happiness feeds my happiness. But uh, Catherine, I know this was not a question. I just wanted to mm -hmm. um, address um, Michelle's point regarding privilege because, you know, I consider yeah. myself some sort of an equity warrior and we're all here really to talk about um, how we can turn the tides for all populations and and the complexity that we have here within the county we're so diverse and this disease has affected us all in different ways um but you know to the point that she has made regarding people who just did not have the opportunity to stay home those who serve tirelessly in the hospitals in the supermarkets you know were at such a great risk um, we took all of that for granted as well. Um, I'd like to also talk about that, you know, interrelated social kind of construct that we have where, you know, socially our young people are, have been, you know, kind of just taken out of their norm and, you know, how that relates to their mental health. Um, we also know that Dr. Etienne has spoke, spoken about the comorbidities that exist and particularly are higher in communities of color, which has exasperated, you know, the, the outcomes of COVID on individuals. Um, and so last night we had a conversation about vaping and, you know, young people who vape or smoke cigarettes, um, you know, have a five to seven higher likelihood of, you know, developing, co you know, um, uh, succumbing to COVID should they, you know, contact it or contract it, I should say. Um, so, you know, we have to be very mindful of our practices. And so we want to continue to just encourage people to live their life to the fullest. And the way you do that is really to try to arm yourself with protection. And, and in my view, that would be starting with the vaccine. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's starting with the vaccine. It's still wearing a mask. Of course, the CDC guidelines are, are changing. Um, but but right now, you know, it's still wearing a mask. And, you know, not that anybody wants to hear a lecture, but it's it's certainly not smoking and, and not vaping. I think, um, you know, it's, it's fair to say that we all do things when we're young that we regret. And and that's that's one thing It puts you at risk for for other illnesses and puts you at risk for COVID. So let's take that off the table. Um, yeah, I just, wanted, just if I can just briefly sure, add to what course. Dr. Harris Madden just commented on it. So it's, and she's right, it's so important. Um, you know, that luxury of staying home, you know, saying, okay, I'm gonna work from home for the next year, year and a half. <laughs> the, you know, the, the, there's a small, you know, there's a portion of the population that has that privilege. There's a large, percentage of the population that does not. Um, and we call these people, a lot of them are frontline, where mm -hmm. you really have to go out to earn your living. Um, even as a physician, I'm in the hospital on a regular basis. Um, and I think about the fact that each time I went in there to the, you know, these COVID wards, COVID units, um, getting, a, you know, potentially exposed to these infection, and then going back home to my family. You saw my daughter just came in here. My my son is in, running around the house, my wife. So all these people who I'm encountering, you know, I could go out, get this COVID, bring it home. And, and you never know how it's going to affect any individual. So even though, you know, people say, oh, I'm not going to be, nothing bad will happen to me. You really don't know how COVID will affect your body. And so one of the biggest relief, I would say for me, um, and probably other people who have, who are forced to leave their house to work, um, is having that relief to say, now I feel much better that I know I'm, you know, unlikely to bring COVID home to my family, um, and infect them, get them sick, have somebody, you know, die. And, you know, like, uh, you know, Dr. Harris Madden, my dad died during the COVID and my uncle died during the COVID uh, pandemic. And I would have loved for them to have had a vaccine. Uh, to avoid those, you know, there were untimely deaths. They were doing perfectly fine uh, with their, you know, with their lives. They had some comorbidities, um, and now they're now they're gone. You know, I mean, what a you know, having that vaccine just makes so much difference that you're not bringing this 
virus home. And we know people who have gotten the vaccine are really, you know, much less likely to transmit this infection uh, to anyone. So this is just very important. And, and, and Dr. Harrisman is absolutely right. Certain communities, uh, particularly people of color, are disproportionate risk. Um, and we want to, you know, um, you know, you know, get, get this. I, I, one of the students, I think maybe it was um, Jack, who said he wants to, you know, you know, stop this virus right in its tracks. That's what we really have to do is just is do just that with this by taking this vaccine. You know, it's interesting. I think, um, you know, we tr we try to make getting vaccinated. We try to make it something fun and we try to make it something that people want to do. But at the end of the day, you know, Dr. Harris Madden, Dr. 18, you hit on, on, on two things is that people have died because of COVID. A lot of people have died because of COVID and this vaccine will save lives. It is saving lives right now. And we have to just be, I think at the end of the day, that direct about it is that this is saving lives. This is important. Um, Dr. Atian, doc, Dr. Damian Harris Madden, this question is for either one of you or both of you. In the communities that are being more impacted by COVID, what can young people do to help that situation? Dr. Harris Madden, do you want to go first? Yeah, exactly. Sure. I, I, I will address those young people in congregate care scenarios. And, and again, when we talk about the equity, we cannot forget about young people who are in the foster care system, who may be in the juvenile justice system, who may live tripled up or are considered, you know, homeless and, and so are in sheltered uh, scenarios. These young people are highly encouraged to receive a vaccine because they are in such crowded spaces. There's really no control over what they who they come in contact with. Um, well, in some cases there's control, but you know, when you live in a congregate care setting, it's kind of like the equivalent to the nursing home scenario where you have a foster care home, for instance, with multiple young people living there. And if they're not protecting each other by protecting themselves, they are running the risk of affecting you know, another person in the household. And when we talk about our personal stories, you know, I've had young people in my family who have contracted COVID and have not been completely well, whereas I know other young people who've contracted it and have fared very well. I mean, very well, meaning that they had, they were asymptomatic and yet they could still pass it on to someone else. So to answer your question, Catherine, I think that young people have to continue to be vigilant you know, again, vaccination is a very good advancement from just wearing a mask, but we have to be more compassionate and considerate of others. And if we lead by those examples, I think that our young people will be in a much better place. I have a friend whose son suffered, you know, multiple heart failures, um, multiple heart transplants, for example. By the grace of God, he is still here. He is now healthy yet he's gone through tremendous pain and his family, tremendous suffering and worry and angst and will have years and years to worry about whether or not he's okay. Similar to pneumonia in some cases when, you know, we have to continue to check to see if we'll, our lungs will be okay. So, you know, to the young people that are capable and able to make change, they should, and it's a small ask. Mm -hmm. Continue to wear your mask, especially if you're not vaccinated, um, and follow the guidelines. Yeah. Doc, Dr. Etienne, please go ahead. Sure, absolutely. And I'll just add, I won't duplicate what's already been said, but you know, when the when the pandemic first started, you know, I always think of things in terms of, you know, this is a war. We're fighting a war. What was our defense? What was the arm body armor that we had? We had social distancing. We had wash your hands and we had wear your mask. That was our, those were our three main tools that we had to combat this pandemic. Um, now we have a fourth one, which is to get vaccinated. And we know that the vaccine works. We know it protects you. So now you've got the four things that you can do. Social distancing, wash your hands, wear your mask and get vaccinated. At the beginning of the pandemic, we told everyone um, even if you won't do it for yourself, do it for somebody else you love, somebody else you care about. 
And I'll say the exact same thing about these vaccines. Even if you think I'm not vulnerable, I'm not going to die from COVID, I'm not going to, you know, nothing bad's going to happen to me. Think about this other person that you care about who might actually be affected by COVID. Think about the person who might not be able to get the vaccine for whatever reason. Um, you know, you want to protect that person, whether it's your, whether it's grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, brother, cousin, sister, all these different people, you want to protect them. Um, and I say, you know, you go get your vaccine, bring a friend with you, somebody else you care about, get them vaccinated. Um, because that's what we really need to happen here is for all of us. It's all hands on deck. We got to protect each other. If you care about your friends, you care about your family, you care about the community, you will get vaccinated. That's right. Well, I know that, you know, in our country, the most dramatic change in, in history has been brought about by young people. So I have a lot of faith in, in the young people watching this program. I know you're going to get vaccinated. I know you're going to really bring us over the finish line when it comes to yes. uh, herd immunity. So I have a lot of faith in the young people, especially the young people on this on this uh, program tonight. I want to go back to Jack. Uh, Jack, I know you're having computer problems, so I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, but I want to ask you, you're, you're back in school, you're vaccinated. Tell me what it was like to be back in class again. Yeah, um, it, it, it's definitely a sense of relief throughout the duration of the pandemic, um, or, or, or since September, I've kind of been in a hybrid model um, and, and, and over the spring, my school adopted a fully in-person model, so I've been going fully in-person. But there was definitely a sense of apprehension going to, to, to classes every day in person. The hallways were crowded, three feet, not, not really kind of um, a, a lot of the mitigation methods and safety factors. Um, and, and with the smaller and more crowded hallways, I, I definitely felt like I, I was worried. But now, as soon as I've been vaccinated, and I guess as of yesterday or as of today, um, there's a new sense of relief. There's a new sense that I can focus on my learning, which is kind of why I'm ultimately there. I, I feel less at worry, um, which I think is so important because at the end of the day, school should be about enriching my knowledge. It should be about socializing, um, connecting with friends, connecting with teachers. Um, the last thing that I want to have on my mind is stress of contracting COVID. And now that I'm vaccinated, it's just a, a, it's just a whole new experience. And I think it really is a transformative one. Hallie, what, what was it like for you to be back in the classroom? So unfortunately I have not been inside of my, inside of school since the beginning of September. I have not had that in-person learning experience um, all of my senior year. Um, COVID-19, a virus that has caused havoc and it has caused isolation and uncertainty in our world. And our harsh reality is a virus that has destroyed businesses, the economy, the, the sense of normalcy. So as we walk outside, a mask must be used for protection from the invisible. But I feel like the vaccine is a ticket to a sense of normalcy again, where we no longer have to wear masks, masks in the near future or fear that we may breathe in the contaminated air of an airborne virus. Um, so me having the vaccine, even though I wasn't, I got it later on in the year. Now we're coming close to the home stretch and I'm going about to graduate. Because I got the vaccine, I definitely now have a sigh of relief. Um, I'm looking forward to venturing out, especially since I'm gonna be a college student in the fall. Um, me having the vaccine, I was allowed to attend prom and hopefully have an in-person graduation and just enjoy the last couple events of my senior year since I didn't get that in-person experience all of my senior year. So aside from a prom, which is tremendously significant, Hallie, what are you most looking forward to doing now that you're vaccinated? Like I, like I touched on, um, definitely I'm looking forward to venturing out since I have been isolated from all of my classmates and my friends and the majority of my family for this whole year. So now having the vaccine, I'm definitely looking forward to having that in-person experience and that dormant experience when I get to college in the fall. Um, okay. and just having and just socialize just had going to a party right yeah or just socialize and just get that 
missing factor that I've been missing for this whole year. Right. No, it's been a tough. It's been a tough year for you, and you know, especially for your senior year in high school. That's a rite of passage, and so I'm glad you got to go to prom, and and I'm glad you're getting to do some things to to really celebrate that milestone in your life now. Michelle, can you tell me? I know you've been away at college, but now that you're vaccinated, what are you most looking forward to doing? Are you looking forward to going to a concert, going to a, a baseball game? What is it that you want to do? Um, well, the last time I was in a classroom setting, I was a freshman, and the next time will be me as a junior, which I think is kind of, it's insane. It's mind blowing to me. Um, I I think Zoom fatigue is just like the most annoying thing of this whole pandemic. You know, I I take had five classes. I uh, have an internship that I work twenty hours a week. It's tiring. And then on top of that, um, I was very involved. I still am um, in many clubs at school. I'm a tour guide. I'm on a dance team and um, I'm part of the fashion magazine, but those are all things that um, didn't look the same during the pandemic year. It was all just more Zoom meetings, more Google Calendar invites, um, and it gets exhausting because that's um, that was supposed to be the break from all the academics, and it was supposed to be a place of socializing and kind of following my passions. I look forward to giving my first in-person tour to prospective students who were just like me you know, a couple years ago. Um, I definitely miss going to concerts. I miss, um, I think traveling is another really important thing is just being able to explore. But most of all, I just miss being a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 I think um, I, I think that you hit the nail on the head. You know, it's been it's been hard and it's been hard to just be a regular a regular kid with all of this with all of this going on. Um, Jack, now that you're vaccinated, anything specifically that you're really looking forward to doing? definitely echo uh, what, what the other panelists have said um, for sure travel that's a big thing I feel like um, I, I, I don't really think I've left the state of New York maybe Connecticut or, or even Westchester County for that matter um, and I, I like being able to explore what the Northeast has to offer I'm definitely going to be going on college tours this summer which is really exciting I have not been on one and I'm a junior which is quite I, I, I'm normal to say the least. I feel like most juniors would have been on a few by now. So definitely looking forward to traveling, um, seeing friends more frequently, um, and, and other kinds of social events. Um, possibly, I know Broadway is opening up in September. We live so close to the city. And if you can see the Hamilton poster in the backgrounds, um, you, you know that I'm a, a, a Broadway fan. So that would be very exciting. So yeah, a, a whole plethora of, of things that were restricted during the pandemic that will now be a opening up, I'm quite excited to participate in. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're nearing uh, just mm -hmm. about seven o'clock. Dr. Atian, we have one question that came in from Lisa. She wants to know if I'm not ready to get the vaccine right now, how long do I have to decide? Well, you know, for everyone out there, you know, it's, uh, you know, this is, it's very fluid. Um, and what I'd say what you want to do if you're not ready right now is, you know, get the information, you know, whether it's from, um, you know, any, you know, trusted source, I wouldn't say not, you know, you want to go, you don't want to go to untrusted sources that just make up ideas, but you want to go to whether it's a doctor or community center, uh, other people who, you know, um, give you useful and accurate information, you know, gather that information, um, and then make an informed decision. Um, I think as you learn more about it, you're, you, you'll be able to see the benefits of the vaccine um, and then move on to actually getting it. But I think it is a process for each individual um, to gradually, you know, come to an understanding of the benefits, the risks of the vaccine, um, and then to finally take the vaccine uh, when you feel, uh, you know, comfortable with it. And, you know, sometimes talk to your friends who have gotten it. Like you saw today, lots of these young folks. Uh, these young people got the vaccine. They've told you their experiences. Uh, I felt a little sick with my vaccine also. Uh, a day later, I felt perfectly fine. So, you know, hearing those stories um, and seeing the impact in the community, I think uh, will help, uh, you know, sway you to make a, a more informed decision. Okay, great. 
Um, I just want to remind everybody that the County Center is now vaccinating um, those 12 years old and older. The Westchester County Center and walk-ins are welcome. You could walk there tomorrow. Uh, I think it opens at about eight o'clock. Um, so, so please take advantage of these vaccine opportunities. If you have questions, if you want to make an appointment, you can go on the New York State website or the Westchester County website. We're going to put those websites right in the chat right here on the Facebook page. And um, there is a lot of opportunity to get a vaccine. It is a very easy process and we encourage you all to do it. We're gonna go round robin right now and have some parting words. First, we'll go to uh, Jack. What do you want to tell everyone about getting vaccinated? Yeah, um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank all the other panelists for making this such a, a great conversation. I think this is really necessary. Um, and thank you to Dr. Harris Madden and Dr. Etienne for your leadership. Um, but, but specifically focusing on youth vaccinations, we really are at a critical point in the pandemic. Um, when, when I, I remember March 13th, when I heard that I was taking a chem test Friday, or I think it was Friday, I never thought that this would be what would happen. I thought it would be like a two week break and we'd be back to quote unquote normal. Um, but it has really been an arduous pandemic that has really tested people in a multitude of capacities. Um, and this is really the kind of key to, to turning a new page in the pandemic where you're able to socialize, you're able to go to school, you're able to, um, to do things that this pandemic has restricted you from being done. And so I, I really think that, that vaccinations are the key. It's what the science tells us. We have the empirical evidence to support that. They're safe. It, it's really a painless process. Um, and within five weeks time, you, you can do all of the things that you are so deeply yearning to do. So all of the other young people that might be tuning into this, my peers throughout Westchester County, I highly encourage you to get vaccinated. It is really imperative and it's something that's going to help all of society in a transformative way. Michelle, words for the night? Yeah, I mean, just to kind of echo what Jack said, um, uh, same thing, you know, you're one moment you're in the class with all of your college friends and you're all going on spring break and you're saying, hey, I'll see you next week. And then you get excited, you get an extra week and then it turns out that it just becomes this whole ordeal. Um, two weeks after that, I never thought that my best friend would lose her mom to COVID. Um, and then six months after that, I never expected to be attending a Zoom funeral for my for my uncle in Columbia. So. Um, I really encourage you all that are, you know, watching this. Um, all of our lives have changed, no matter who you are. I'm sure if you can kind of, you know, take a moment and think what has happened and how your life has changed, whether it's something minor or major. And I really encourage you all to please get this vaccine. Um, you know, I think it's really important to lead with compassion. Not only should we all want to return to our lives of just normalcy and go back to the things that we love doing, but it's really important to, um, just try and protect our community as much as possible. Try and protect those that might not have the same resources or access to certain things as you. Um, and just try and keep that in mind. This this goes far beyond just, you know, COVID-19. Absolutely. Hallie, words for the evening? My last message would be do not feed your mind with false information. Um, instead, inform yourself, um, educate yourself on the matter, gather, gather information from reliable sources and make the educated um, choice for yourself. Um, I strongly believe as well as everyone else on the panel that the vaccine is a ticket to a sense of normalcy again. Um, and it's a ticket to ending the pandemic indefinitely. So I definitely encourage everyone to go out and get the vaccine. Absolutely. Dr. ATN, words for this evening? Yeah, so I, I like what I've heard. I mean, we all wanna go back to, you know, life as close to as what it, was, what it was before, I'd say no more Zoom funerals, no more Zoom graduations, no more Zoom anything. You get yeah. vaccinated, we can put all that stuff behind um, and start to you know see each other in person um, and be comfortable uh, being around your friends, family, um, and that's that's what I say. I want to go back. I want to see my you know I want to see my patients. Some of my patients can't come to the office. I want to see them in person. I think it makes a big difference to have the human touch and being able to have that human interaction. And that's what we want, so, so get vaccinated. Absolutely. 
uh, Dr. Damia Harris Madden. First, I want to thank you so much for pulling this all together. The Youth Board has just been tremendous during this uh, COVID pandemic, and all of your efforts are, are very much appreciated uh, by all of us, especially the young people. So thank you for doing this, first of all, pulling this all together. Uh, Dr. Harris Madden, any words for this evening to, to leave on? I think much of it has been said, you know, um, we have so many brilliant young people in Westchester. I am never amazed, only proud every time we do forums like these because we get to hear from the diverse voices. And I'm very proud of you all for activating your voice, um, joining Westchester County in its efforts to uh, maintain its status as Bestchester, as we call it, because there's just so many <laughs> opportunities. And we can only be, remain Bestchester when we resume activities. And so um, I think everyone has hit it all. And I, and I just want to say thank you to you, Catherine, as well, for allowing us this platform. We're not going to stop. We're going to continue to educate. We're going to continue to partner with whatever organizations we can um, so that we can debunk those myths, as Hallie referenced. You know, and, and we look to our leaders that are here on this. On this uh, <laughs> I hate to say it, Dr. Antia, Zoom. <laughs> this platform, you know, um, so that we can all be together and enjoy our lives and be our best selves. So thank you. Thank you again to George Latimer, who has uh, put in tremendous resources um, to help stem this pandemic and has visited so many places and provided PPE and uh, remote learning centers for young people. I know through our office, we've been, you know, in, in, in steeped in, in the work and trying to make sure opportunities remain available despite the pandemic. Um, so, you know, I want to say thank you to our administration. Thank you again to Dr. Etienne, who has uh, really led the charge in terms of turning the tides for the equity lens and all of you. So I'm happy that we were able to have this conversation tonight. Thank you. And, and I'm so happy that, that we were able to all come together and talk about this very important topic. Michelle, Jack, Hallie, you guys are stars. There is tons of love for you on the Facebook comments uh, underneath, this, uh, underneath this live stream. So thank you so much for being part of this and sharing your stories with us. Um, to the young people out there, I will just tell you that we love you and we want you to stay safe and we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that you do. So please get vaccinated. Um, and, and at the end of the day, I know that the young people of Westchester are going to make, as I said, the most dramatic change because you always do. And I know you're going to carry us through and I know you're going to make us proud. So get vaccinated. We're all rooting for you. And we will talk again very soon. Thanks very much and have a great night.